Ho, 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 Merry Christmas and that. Or if you're not watching this within a week of it being published, Merry January to November. So, MG ZS EV today. Now, updated. And what an update. Now, I've already reviewed this car for the channel quite recently, and to be honest, the basic character has stayed the same with the update. What we've got here is a facelift of a car that was launched in 2018. So I'll give you some links to that video if you want a more detailed review than this is going to be, just of the update, basically. All right. Let's crack on. The main change with the 2021 MG ZS EV is a much bigger battery, which at a stroke has solved what was the main weakness of the car, its range. Yeah, this was a car that was always very easy to recommend, but also always with a caveat about the range, but not anymore. So where you once got a 44 kilowatt hour battery, you now get a 73, which has bumped the range by more than 100 miles, and that completely transforms the car in terms of an ownership experience. A shorter range version is coming too, but even that beats the range of the outgoing car, but for a more affordable price point. <laughs> Both get the same motor though, and it's a perfectly adequate one. Now it's actually lost a little bit of torque for reasons of range, I assume. But to be honest, it makes very little difference. I haven't really noticed it. This was never one of those pin you to the back of your chair type of EVs anyway. It's more than quick enough. And actually its defining characteristic is that it's one of the smoother EVs to drive on the market. Everything about this car feels like soft. The main thing is the right quality. It's really emollient and watery almost. It's just dead, supple and smooth. But it's not just that. The seats themselves are like sinking into sofas and the pedals are really like spongy, but not in a bad way. The accelerator and the brake both have a pleasant elastic quality about them. You don't drive this car enthusiastically, if you know what I mean. It's not a car that encourages that because when you do, it rolls all over the shop. And again, it's really not that quick. It's not a car that gives you confidence to drive hard. Instead, you just drive it calmly. It suits that. It does charge quickly though. So if you can find a 100 kilowatt hour charging station, it will get from zero to 80% in about three quarters of an hour. And what that does is makes this a feasible long journey car. There's even a four stage light setup on the charging port on the outside of the car. So you can now check from there how your charging is going. Other facelift changes include new LED headlamps, a more handsome panel at the front where the grille is in ice versions. Nothing revolutionary, but it's a bit more handsome now. And actually MG is focused more on changing the bits where it counts more for you on the inside. Mainly a new 10 inch infotainment setup that looks better on a basic level, but it also has more intuitive software now. And the digital instrument panel is also much improved. Bigger, bolder, and more modern. The rest of the cabin is as was. It's all as you would expect, plus a little bit more. So this is soft touch, this isn't, but then there's a nice swathe of carbon fiber effect plastic, I guess, across the lower part of the dashboard. Just bumps up the sensor quality a little bit. So it's all very neat, if not very inspirational. Feels a bit old school. And the driving position. So it would be better if the steering wheel adjusted for reach and if the seat went down a little bit, but you can see I'm fine. There's plenty of head space. And what it means is because you sit quite high, visibility is really good all the way around. It just does all the basic stuff in here well enough. You might want a little bit more refinement from this, a little bit less wind noise at high speed, a little bit less tire noise, but it won't bother you. But honestly, it is hard to think of a better value EV than this. Now, I don't normally talk about specific costs in these videos because, you know, it's not conducive to evergreen internet content. But at the moment, we are doing these for well under £250 a month. And that's amazing for all of this car, all of this electric car. Seriously, for an EV with this much space, kit and comfort, that is mega cheap. On which, this is a very spacious and thoughtful thing. If you look at the boot volume, you'll see it trounces other crossover EV type things, and it's not just a big hole either. There's a twin floor and everything, somewhere to hide your charging cables at least. Up front, the storage isn't mind blowing, if cabin storage has ever blown your mind, but there's more than enough space for your cups and your bottles and your generic detritus. Plenty of rear space too, for your knees and that. It's just a proper family car, this. It's safe too, five-star Euro NCAP rating. And so, What's the catch? Well, 
there isn't one, really. Now, there is no escaping that this never feels quite as solid or as interesting or as entertaining to drive as most of the other stuff in the class. The small to medium-ish crossover EV class, that is. But, again, you pay less for it. It never feels cheap in here. And MG is so confident in this product that it gives it a seven-year, 80,000-mile warranty. And also, you get a lot of equipment as standard. Three trims, pause if you want to see that stuff, now. And that's it. Honestly, I really rate this thing highly. It has always been one of the first cars that I recommend to somebody who asks me about a good value, spacious EV. And now it's even better because it feels a bit nicer, it looks a bit better, and it's even easier to live with. Bosh. So, like I said, there's a more detailed and funnier, if we're honest, review of this thing on the channel already if you want to check that out. So now that you know what the changes are, you can see more about what the car is generally like if you watch that. And with that, we're done. See you next time. Bye.